Saints here here with CHBN. I have Tina Fairkaler with us today and Paul Plett. Um, you two are just some of the people behind the genius of this brand new Made in Manitoba sitcom. We've got Maria and the Menos. Uh, whoever would like to start, I would love to hear. For people who don't know, tell us about the show. How did it come to be? Um, yeah, well, the show's called Maria and the Menos. It's a, like you just said, it's a TV sitcom. Uh, and it's about a Filipino Canadian woman who moves in with her Mennonite in-laws. So super Manitoba story. Um, it kind of, I mean, the way I sort of, the, the way it sort of came together was, I mean, I'm Mennonite and Tina here is Mennonite as well. And I've always wanted to do something more kind of like in the Mennonite space here in Manitoba. I also uh, am a filmmaker here in Winnipeg and I collaborate with a lot of Filipino Canadians here in the city. And I've also always wanted to do something sort of that explores that culture and that story. So this idea kind of came together as sort of a, a bringing together, a clashing together of those two ideas of, of how do you bring out some of these cultural ideas, cultural identity, but also in a way that's not sort of dark. I mean, in a way that's fun, that's light, that's a celebration of culture as opposed to something that, that um, brings out kind of the negative in things. Sounds amazing. Tina, how did you get on board with all of this? Well, I have worked with Paul in the past and uh, and through that, uh, I asked him to uh, help me do some filming for some MCC videos. And um, and through that uh, collaboration on on those films, uh, uh, we, you know, struck up a conversation about about uh, doing a television show um you know like uh, would I be interested in working on something like that with him and uh and I have been doing some writing and uh I've done this work with uh with MCC now and uh, writing some films and last summer I, I also worked on some low German films and I have had a lot of fun in the collaboration aspect of like writing and uh, putting something together and putting it out there. Um, I've had um, some acting experience in my life, um, started a theater company here in Winkler, Flatlands Theater Company with some friends and my husband many years ago. So um, moving in this direction was sort of like a strange, wonderful coincidence. <laughs> I would say. I love that. Tina is our resident Mennonite expert. She is, she lives in Winkler and I mean, I'm a Mennonite. I know a bit about Mennonites, but I mean, my, my, I, I kind of know how to make movies and stuff, but Tina definitely is helping us ground this entire show in the reality of Mennonites here in Southern Manitoba. And she also is an expert in low German Plotich, which we're trying to kind of figure out ways that we can sneak into the show uh, again, without having to get into like subtitles or people having to know what time. Excellent. <laughs> he he keeps got... saying that I'm an expert in low German. I'm like, oh, please don't don't say that because I know experts, and uh, and and I would probably make them cringe. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, so I'm... I also come from a Mennonite background. Um, we've got Plotich, uh speakers in my family. I don't actually, other than like. Stinkota and Shlopagona, like, and and then the Good. foods, like that's about it. Yeah, yeah, me um, too. But with that said, um, do you? Is it true that Low German is a spoken language, and then when you write it, you're writing High German? Is that true, or can you write out? You can write out. It's written language. So this is a Everybody. great question okay. for Tina. Look at this. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, Low German is has been written um, since the 1950s, really. Um, and so, but but it's not generally a written language. So um, most low German speakers will read and write in high German because that's what they're taught in school. But that's really the language of the church. So low German is the language of the everyday, the vernacular, the Muttersprache, right? So your mother tongue. So, but, um, but it has been written and, um, you know, there was like some hope, I think in the eighties that there was, a, would be this renaissance of low German writing, but, um, which hasn't come entirely to fruition, but, but, uh, 
Yeah, yeah. So there is low German writing out, out there. Uh, my friend actually has a has a low German copy of the first Harry Potter book. So there, I know. Seriously, I'm like, where can I get? Deep cut. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for educating me on that as well, Tina. Appreciate that. Um, so, you know, reading over the press release of this show, I would love to hear about uh, the fact that the show challenges those current stereotypes of both Filipinos and Mennonites. Would you mind breaking down even one or two of both of those? Yeah, well, I think one thing that's really important to note is, like, we're talking about the Mennonite perspective here. But we have Hazel Wallace, who's a Filipino Canadian, and also Alec Carlos, who is another Filipino Canadian. We have we have a Filipino Canadians on who also helped create the show and helped write the show. So it's real important that that this show is a balance between the two cultures. It's not just a Mennonite show. It's not just a Filipino show. I think for me, I mean, what I find really funny about the show is that sort of it, it's set in Winkler. It's set in Manitoba. It's set in a Mennonite context. But that's kind of just the setting. For me, what's really funny about it is where these characters go from there. I mean, that we're trying to make, I mean, obviously it's a sitcom, so we're trying to make funny characters. Um, but it's more about like, how do they interact with each other as opposed to a show that's just sort of like about stereotypes or about trying to educate an audience, you know? It's a fun show, whether you kind of, if you do care about Mennonites and Filipinos, this is for you, right? But even if you don't, I still feel like you're gonna enjoy this show. I mean, some of the stereotypes that I think we like to break down or we're trying to break down is I think one of the big ones for the Mennonite side of things is this is a this is a fairly modern family. You know, I mean, this is a family that that I mean, they, there is some low German spoken in the show and stuff, but it's a family that that is sort of up to date on sort of modern technology appliances, um, how they kind of tend to do things. I mean, it's. I think that there's a general perspective out there that Mennonites are Amish people. And so that's kind of a really big one that we're just sort of trying to like, you know, tackle here is just like, I know for myself having traveled around the world and met Mennonites around the world, like there's a whole gambit of different kinds of Mennonites. But I think me and Tina both really kind of relate to and kind of re what resonates with us is the Mennonite Central Committee kind of Mennonites. You know, when you think of like Mennonites who who know about the world, who are interested in the world, who, you know, have a real heart for other folks and other cultures, etc. That's sort of what we're sort of trying to celebrate here. So it's not all Mennonites. I mean, it's not kind of like getting into the specific details of every different kind of Mennonite. But we are trying to sort of look at this this one particular kind of family that would live in Winkler and explore like, well, what would that experience be like if their Filipino Canadian daughter in law moved in with them? How would that look? And what are the kind of hilarious things that could happen? Absolutely. That's great. Um, any like. OK, so coming from Maria's side, she's moving into this culture she may not be totally aware of. Does she bring things to the table then, too? Oh, yeah. She brings a ton. <laughs> we got to talk to Hazel. I mean, <laughs> Hazel's amazing. It just like what she kind of brings to the table in terms of. Yeah, in terms of 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 uh, what she what she likes, to, the music she likes to listen to, the the kind of food that she likes to eat. I mean, she's from again, she's raised um, in a Filipino Canadian household. So that's her whole perspective. And, you know, when her family comes, I mean, we've got We've got a Filipino karaoke episode that's going to be happening. We've got we've got Filipino cultural festivals that we're going to be kind of having in the show. There's all kinds of stuff that happens. And that's really sort of the joy of the show is ramming these two things together. You know, like what's been really fun. I mean, we're we're at the early, early stages here. We've just sort of written written the episodes and sitting in the writer's room. Just like when you mention something, then all of us are like, hold on, wait, what was that? What did you just say? And then we go and we try to unpack that one thing that if you're a Mennonite, you're just like, oh, this is a normal thing that happens. No one else knows about. Or for the Filipino Canadians, like this is something that's totally normal to them. No one knows about. So exploring those things and trying to figure out, again, how do you make an episode out of that? How do you make comedy happen? That's been a real joy. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. It's been fun. I I love the the idea of 
yes, you are watching this sitcom and, you know, hilarity will ensue, but um, you're also getting to know more about cultures. Like you said, you know, there's these little things that, wait, doesn't everybody know this? Oh, that's a Mennonite thing. Oh, or, or, and you, like you said, vice versa. So that's so fun. Um, Have you guys started filming? No. Yes. No, we've just, this is just the announcement that the show's happening. We just started the casting process. So honestly, if there are any Mennonites or Filipino Canadians in Manitoba that are interested in being in a show like this, um, they should look us up and, and we're looking, we're currently casting. So we're looking for anyone and everyone that wants to possibly, um, audition for something like this. We want this show to be authentic, honest. It's made in Manitoba, a hundred percent shot in Manitoba, Manitoba actors, crew, everything. Mm-hmm. That is very exciting. Do you guys have some things lined up a house that you're like, okay. Oh, we're, was, we're searching for houses too. We're doing it all right now. Yeah, we're yeah, this, yeah. Yeah, this early. We're early. We in the thick of things. <laughs> yeah, we're filming. We're filming in in uh, January, February, March, twenty twenty three. So uh, winter, winter this this uh, this winter. Um, so yeah, we're looking for houses too. I mean, if anybody has a house uh, that they that they want uh, to be featured in a TV show, this is uh, this is the time as well for for. Uh, Doing all that searching for houses, searching for cast, searching for locations, the whole gambit. Yeah. Very Cost, exciting. Costume. <laughs> hmm I think that it. should be a plenty in Winkler, at least on the Mennonite side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, what I will say is when it comes to Manitoba winters, I mean, both of you, I'm sure, well-versed, especially that I mean, last all, winter. All four of us. All four of us yes. writers are well-versed. Yeah. <laughs> And that's a big so, part of the show, too. I mean, we have episodes that we're like, oh, we got to make sure if this is like a Manitoba show, we got to have some good winter episodes that explore like what winter's like. And I mean, we all have, again, different sort of ways that we try to get through the winter, you know, keep the heat down, bundle up. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different things that we sort of explore there as well. Yeah. I love it. Um, well, for me, if you were, you know, shooting a show and doing that January, February, March, that'd be a great way to get rid of the winter or pass the time as it were. So uh, great timing on that. Wonderful. If people are interested or they can lend a hand or whatever, like you were talking about casting and different things like that, um, is there a specific way they can get a hold of you guys or who they need to? At Maria and the Menos at gmail.com. Nice. Okay. Thanks. I love it. <laughs> and we can fantastic. also we can also share our casting call with you if you want if you want to post that as well we can yeah. we can share that that document with you too. Okay, great. Yeah, well, totally. that is so exciting. I can't wait to hear as this unfolds and then finally you know see an episode and things like that. I know down the road, but uh, um, is there anything else that you wanted to share that I may have missed? For me, that's good. I mean, we're excited. Thank you so much for having us. Mm-hmm. I mean. This is again like this is the, this is what's cool about this show is is again this is not Manitoba sort of standing in for like Chicago or like the Midwest in America or something. This is Manitoba being Manitoba and we're just psyched to be making this thing to be letting people know about it. So thanks again for mm-hmm. for taking the time to talk with us and yeah, we're we're we'll definitely keep you in the loop as things continue to sort of evolve. Yeah, amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and, Tina, oh, go ahead. Yeah. You know, you don't have to be Filipino or Mennonite, I think, to enjoy the show because I think it's yeah. it's it's about it's about different cultures and and how they're clashing together. And it's like I think anybody from any culture is going to be able to embrace this and embrace the characters. Yeah, if people are super interested in watching it or sort of following, I mean, this is going to be broadcast on Yes TV, which is a faith based TV station. Um, it's uh, across Canada. They have centers in Ontario and Alberta. But uh, if people want to subscribe to it, they can. And there's also a smaller streaming platform called Castle, which is going to be available on. So that's where it's going to be broadcast um, next summer. Next August is when it when it comes out. Um, and then beyond that, I mean, we are looking for other partners, other distributors and and uh, and and streaming platforms to sort of make it available. So, again, so Manitobans can watch it because that this is really I mean although there's sort of target audiences everywhere this is really like if you're a Manitoban and you're a part of any of these communities it's really it's going to be 
a chance for you to see yourself or see your culture represented on on TV in a way that I don't think people have seen before. Absolutely. Fantastic. Well, I love it. Thank you so much for joining me today, Tina and Paul. Uh, It's been a blast and I can't wait to hear more as it unfolds throughout the year. Thanks, Sylvia. Thank you.